Hi, welcome to Foreplay. This is Lori Watson, sex therapist and author, and I'm here with psychotherapist Tony Del Medico. Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy, we're going to talk about all things sexual and intimate and how you can get the most out of your sex life. You can check us out on the web at foreplayrst.com. Visit us and send us an email if you'd like. Lori, where will foreplay lead us today? <laughs> okay, this is Tony's topic, I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to talk today about boobs, butts, and bulges. It's got to be erogenous. It's fun just to say out loud: <laughs> boobs, butts, and bulges. It's you hard can't to go say wrong. out loud: boobs, butts, and bulges. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, you start. What, what about boobs and butts and bulges? Well, I, I think what brought the topic to mind, um, particularly for couples that have been in relationship for a while. Um, foreplay gets shortened. We had a, a whole episode on kissing and how we want more presence in the kissing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seems like in foreplay and in sex, it, we get very goal-directed. We focus on the boobs, the butts, and the bulges, and then just get mm-hmm. right to intercourse. And, mm-hmm. and I think at foreplay, radio sex therapy, we're First, advocating – second, third, and home. Yeah, we're advocating slowing down and really exploring your own body and your partner's. And so I think maybe just exploring what goes on um, in our bodies and our partners far beyond just the big three. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. And that will really help us if we figure out all the erogenous zones and other other parts of our body. That kind of helps us get around those bases faster. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I'm sitting, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining the conversations I've had with guys through the years. And are you a boob guy? Are you a butt guy? Are you? And mm-hmm. The conversation really doesn't go much. There's a few past men that. out there, thank God, that are leg men. <laughs> yeah, leg man for sure. Right. Uh-huh. You know, I'm all about the bass. A recent yeah. popular song. So, but I think sensuality goes far beyond any of those things. But somehow in our minds and culture, we we focused in on those three. And I think just opening it up to, um, given our listeners. Um, maybe a remembrance of all the other parts that they have and their partners have that lead to um, feeling very close and connected and can be very pleasurable mm-hmm. and sensuous. Mm-hmm. So um, since I've came up, come up with the topic, Laurie, I'm curious to know um, what's come up with you as you were thinking about boobs and butts <laughs> and bulges. I mean, what, well, do, you know, what do women sit around know, talking what about? what's funny is it wasn't until I was like thinking about what I wanted to say for a good 15, 20 minutes, I was thinking bulges, you know, okay, Tony's going to talk about our, you know, midlife bulges. He wants to talk about rolls and fat. <laughs> and it wasn't until later that I'm like, no, no, no. He's talking about that bulge. That's the bulge. He's talking- <laughs> I was like, the fragile male I am, ego I am so female, bulges. you know, to like, like totally miss it over my head, you know, like where you were going with this. It wasn't boobs, <laughs> butts, and muffin tops. <laughs> it, was, it was bulges. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Uh, I do. That's I mean, I, I say oftentimes that, you know, women, Men like to come up behind a woman in the, in the kitchen and, you know, cup her breasts and bump, bump her with his bulge. And, you know, I mean, I think that for him, you know, this is very sexy. And for women, like what you talked about, this other erogenous sense and kind of more general arousal is really many times what she needs to get there. Because she's not, as we've talked about before, instantly sexual. She may not be in a sexual place. I mean, that might work if she was. But uh, most of the time, she's not if she's cooking dinner. And <laughs> so this... With you know, little children scrambling yeah. <laughs> at her feet. <laughs> Lord, those are difficult years. Oh, yeah. Really tough. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he thinks about going for broke uh, for second and third oftentimes and maybe makes the mistake of sexually approaching that way without something a little more subtle. Yeah, no, I would agree. And, mm-hmm. and I think to get to those other places, we have to... And, and that's what we're advocating with foreplay RST is slowing down. Mm-hmm. Just slowing down and trying to create some space to explore each other um, without the goal being the home run or the mm-hmm. climax or anything else, but just to enjoy um, the bodies and our partner's bodies that we um, we get a chance to inhabit for a while. Right. I think if he came up behind her and kind of swept her hair away and kissed the back of her neck, huh. that that would be sexy. Back of you her know, neck. So there's an erogenous zone. Yeah, sound. there's a good erogenous zone. Yeah. The so back the of the neck. neck. Back of the neck, and some would say the side of the neck, the front of the neck. So the neck's a very erogenous zone. Um, <laughs> it's uh, kind of just sexy when you say that. Don't yeah, you? <laughs> yeah. My deep, There's going to be women my, calling in. <laughs> where's my Barry White voice when I need? How do it? I go see Tony? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. the yeah. Operators are standing by. <laughs> 
Um, and, and I think as, as we start to think about other parts that are centrist, I think we go to some others that are sort of self-explanatory. I mean uh, inner thighs are very, very sensitive places. Sure, no, sure. The bottom of the bottom there where the cheeks meet the upper thigh or the upper hamstring, very sensitive place, um, I think, for men and for women. Uh, collarbones, uh, the undersides of your arm, That's my husband's favorite part forearm. on a woman is her collarbones. Ah, yeah, he, he thinks go. that that's kind of yeah. the most beautiful part of a woman. Yeah. I'm thinking, well, or that I can say on the air. <laughs> <laughs> for you. I'm thinking about back in colonial times. I mean, the dress for men were in the, the knickers that came up above the thigh. And so, uh, excuse me, just below the knee. And so the shape of a man's calf was considered very, uh, very sexy and sensuous. So, yeah. Uh, and for some men, certainly the shape of a of a woman's leg, right? Uh, just the curvature can be very sensuous as well. Um, so I would encourage you, uh, if you're listening today, to begin the dialogue with your partner. Uh, we've had other episodes on how to have sex talk, or how to have the ongoing, continuous sex talk with your partner, and this is just a wonderful, fun topic that you can both bring up. Mm-hmm. You know, what is the sensuous part of your body? What do you find sensuous on me? What turns you on when you're watching the big screen mm-hmm. with couples? Mm-hmm. Right. And we would love to hear from you, too. So please send us your feedback at 4PlayRST at any point or questions. We're glad to answer questions. Uh, and we know that you have things to teach us and tell us about sex and things that you'd like to hear us talk about. So we'd love all your feedback. You bet. So today we're, we'll be naming some parts that are more erogenous. But uh, hopefully there'll be a little bit of science behind it too, Laura. We have to so, name the parts. Name the parts. Parts are parts. Are, are we going to name them with slang? Or are we going to name them scientifically? <laughs> How are we going to? What words are we going to use, Timmy? Is, is there a euphemism for nose? <laughs> <laughs> Schnoz? <laughs> Nostrils? Yes. Yeah. See, there's lots. So, um, if you have done a little bit of research here, and if if you go on WebMD. Um, It will say that the nose is also an erogenous zone. In fact, um, the nasal passages actually have erectile tissue. And when you're aroused, uh, things open up and just the nostrils themselves as well. So it seems like um, our First Nations people, our Eskimos, were onto something with Eskimo kisses. But even in our episode on kissing, you talked about – Turning, tilting your head to the side, and and there is so you don't conk noses. <laughs> yeah, but but there is a lot of touching with the mm-hmm. nose, in addition to lips and tongues mm-hmm. and everything else. So not overlooking just how sensitive um, it feels in your own body uh, and your partner's. Mm-hmm. So just in terms of the nose as a as a touch place, not just yeah. as what we use it for olfactory yeah. senses, right? Yeah, I think it's in play. I mean, in the whole grand scheme of things, just. Mm-hmm. Don't, just mm-hmm. don't graze over it. And earlobes. Ear lo- ears earlobes are very sensitive. Are very very mm-hmm. sensitive. Insides of ears, outsides of ears. And again, depending on the person that you're with and what feels good to them. <laughs> I have a child, though, who like has always been sensitive, had sensitive ears. Like, don't touch his ears. Yeah. You know, when he was, you know, growing up, I almost said to the girlfriend, don't, <laughs> don't ever touch his ears. Yeah. The hair cutters, yeah, he didn't like that. I don't, I don't know. And God willing, I won't ever know. You know, anything more about his ears, but <laughs> yeah. some people are hypersensitive. The things we think would be sexy are not so sexy, right? Oh, for sure. And and I think particularly with the couples that come into our um, consulting rooms, there can be a lot of wounding around one partner wanting to touch a certain part on you and you having a bad experience from um, from earlier in life and have that really be re-traumatizing and they don't understand why they can't grab you and get on top of you if you've uh, been pinned down before. Right. Okay. Explain what you mean by wounding. Like, how does that wound? What does that mean? Well, I mean, just what I said. If if you were in a situation where you were held down against your will, mm-hmm. just the fact that someone is on top of you may trigger that old wound. Mm-hmm. So um, for someone who's not been held down against their own will, they wouldn't understand, well, what? Everybody climbs on top. Why? Mm-hmm. What's your problem with this? So Why do you always have to be on top? Their wounding is being rejected. It may have been um, – yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's you know, the wounding of the person that had the old wound. The recreation of a trauma. Back. Yeah. And uh-huh. then the person that's trying to climb on top is going, wait, what's wrong? What am I doing wrong here? So he's feeling shut down and there's a second wound that's being created. And if they can just stop and begin to have the conversation, that opens up mm-hmm. some empathy for what mm-hmm. this person is up against. That Wait, it's not as simple as you won't let me on top because you feel uncomfortable. You've actually been – really mistreated earlier in life. Yeah. And this is really harder for you than 
What happens, though, or what have you seen when maybe one person really, really, really likes to do something, some act or touch some place, and the other person, mm-mm, that is totally not, that is not acceptable. I mean, that it's either too sensitive or it doesn't feel good. It, you know, the, well, one person thinks it's erogenous and it's sexy, and the other person says, not for me. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think um, having the conversation outside of the moment I think Mm -hmm. always, first and foremost, you have to respect the boundaries that are there whenever they're put up for whatever reason. So I think I advocate no is no under any Mm -hmm. circumstances. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, and then coming back later and saying – Even if you're married, no is no. Especially if you're married. I mean, well, not especially, but just in general. You you don't have a divine right Right. to to put yourself in spaces that you're not welcomed. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but I think having the conversation the next day or later on going, you know, what is this for you? Is this just something you haven't done before or is this connected to earlier wounding? And then for that couple just to have a dialogue around it and then realize that, you know, you have somebody that has earlier wounding and you're going to have to have some special care here with her and get some counseling, get some help if if it's important for both of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it actually can be a great gift to that person to say, I honor that this is hard for you. And I'm not going to put you in this uncomfortable position. It actually creates trust mm-hmm. between Again, the two of them and, and may open up more intimacy. So, Right. Well, let's come back to some of these thoughts and these special places that are our erogenous zones next with Foreplay with Tony Telmedico and Lori Watson. We'll be right back. Wanting Sex Again. How to Rediscover Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage by Certified Sex Therapist Lori Watson. Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them, it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy, and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique and that combination together helps marriages be happy improve your sex and improve your relationship with awakening center for couples and intimacy find out more at awakenloveandsex.com and sign up for their next couples retreat weekend hosted by Lori watson awakenloveandsex.com awaken what's possible Okay, welcome back to Foreplay. We are here, Lori Watson, sex therapist, and Tony Delmanico, psychotherapist. Lori, we- today, sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Go, no, you go right ahead, Tony. Today we're talking about <laughs> boobs, butts, and bulges. Right, those bulges. But I didn't know what the heck you were talking about. Not muffin tops. <laughs> Not muffin tops. We were talking about another bulge. You yeah. know, men often wonder if women observe their bulges. <clears throat> like, do women look? I think. I think men are looking at other places. I think muffin tops are a woman's thing. Yeah, women are often checking out how women dress far more than men do. Uh-huh. I think women dress for women. Yeah, I, I was saying I think men wonder if women are looking at the bulge. Ah, you know, I missed and, the question. And, yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. question. Do women look at men's bulges <laughs> yeah, and not their I, bellies I, and their distended <laughs> livers? Right. I, I essentially think probably not very openly. Unless, unless maybe the woman was very attracted to him and it was a come on. I mean, maybe then it's a sexy look, right? It's a, it's a pointed look, so to speak. Uh, but I would say most, most women don't. Uh, although I've had, you know, a few girlfriends who talk about that, that they observe that. But I think men are really self-conscious and they think that they are. Well, we're getting women, into not very, so much. Well, we've ventured very quickly into very sensitive male, ter- male ego territory, yes. which is does size matter and does the size of the bulge matter? And I think maybe today we're talking about other erogenous zones and <laughs> we should probably leave that for a topic okay. in and of itself for another day. Okay, we will not My talk My sensitive about male that. ego is saying swim this way. <laughs> I can see. Inquiring minds do to, want to know. We need to go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. But speaking of the male parts, the right, bulge, the bulge, um, there are specific parts on the male bulge that are more sensitive and more erogenous than other parts. Ah, this you is know? good information, Laurie. Yeah, talk to us. Okay, so I'm going to say some words out loud, but I'm going to use the scientific words. Great. Um, the perineum, which is actually below the scrotum, pressure there is an erogenous zone because it's the front side of the prostate gland. 
And so sometimes good pressure there can really sort of give him a, a, a great erotic feeling. And a lot of women don't know that. A lot of men don't know that for that matter. So do you mean light pressure or heavy pressure? Uh, pretty firm pressure because it's through the, the wall there to get to the prostate gland. But it's the front side of the prostate gland. And so Wonderful. when you're making love, that can, that can be helped. Also vibration for a man right there can be a good thing. Mm. And then the back side of right sort of at the underside of the helmet of the tip of his penis, it's called the frenulum. And it's kind of a little bit of skin that is the, where essentially the foreskin was attached if he's circumcised or if he is not circumcised um, where it is attached. Mm -hmm. That little area right there is highly, 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 highly sensitive. Um, so, you know, you can pay attention to that maybe after he's aroused a little bit too. It might not be the first place to go or to pay close attention in the beginning, but later on that's an erogenous zone on his penis itself. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you for that, Lori. I was also thinking um, with respect to the man's body, um, I know we think about nipples often uh, in terms of the female body. Right. But a man's nipples are, from what I understand, have as many nerve endings as the female nipples as well and can be very erogenous for a man. And I think it's a, a place that's often overlooked. For some men. And, and some men have absolutely no feeling. As hmm. for the record, some women have very little feeling in their nipples, which is crazy because we don't think that. But it it is true. Hmm. Uh, and while we're at really specific parts, I know yeah. we'll go back to sort of other ways to arouse partners. But mm. um, do you know what the A spot is? The A spot <laughs> for a man or for a woman? <laughs> this isn't fair on air, is it? Mine's are woman. getting big, and I'm getting scared. <laughs> I've heard of the G. I've heard of the G spot, Lori, but I have not heard of the A spot. That's right, deep inside the female vagina, like just before the cervix. So that's where the cervix is the opening of the uterus where that connects with the vagina, deep inside on the on the roof of her vagina, if she's on her back, there's the G spot first and then the A spot. And it's actually a stretch pressure point that can feel really good with intercourse. It's possible, but not likely to be able to be reached with fingers, um, maybe more with, you know, a sex toy or something. But um, that spot can be really highly sensitive for her. And it's it's often sometimes people don't even know about it. Wow. The A spot. Well, we've learned something new here today on Four Play RST for sure. It, yeah. I guess you know, inquiring minds want to know: Has this always? Has the A spot always been around in terms of? Uh, um, and we've under, we, we know about the clitoris and the labia, and or is this something right. that is more recent? Well, I'm glad you know about the clitoris because it cannot be said enough that that really is the spot for women in terms of her most nerve endings is right there. Mm -hmm. But is the, yeah, the A spot hasn't been named until some you know of late this this century, but but it's always been there. <laughs> <of> <laughs> Didn't mean it that way. It's an evolutionary. <laughs> and the G spot. I just read yeah. an article. Somebody saying you know that the G spot was you know all made up, and it, it's not. It's really there. <laughs> <laughs> right. In fact, it's kind of the underside of the clitoral structure too. So maybe that's what they were trying to say is make a scientific point. Uh -huh. Yeah. Great. But big, big points on the body. Yeah, wonderful points and, and wonderful information, Laurie. Um, thinking about other erogenous zones, um, and I did not know this either, but the belly button is an erogenous zone. According to WebMD, the belly button for a woman is made of the same tissue as the clitoris. Really? So I didn't know that. I did not know that either until I did my homework. And um, touching that or licking it can be stimulating. It may be too much for a woman because some women don't like their belly buttons played with. Uh, but that's a bit of information and a, a bit of a, a spot to hang out if mm -hmm. your partner likes it. Right. Well. it the, the belly button can have interesting nerves that connect internally inside her. Mm. So so that is like – it's not necessarily the same for every woman, but it does have different nerve endings that kind of hit beyond the actual skin of the belly button, but they hit her deep inside too, mm. which interesting. is interesting, sort of almost connected generally. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, nerves um, are wonderful. Yeah, the small of a back on a woman. There's a lot of nerve endings in her sacral spot uh, that lead down into her vagina as well. So uh, I think a lot of massaging, karate chops, bringing some heat mm -hmm. to a woman's lower back and some pressure, um, oftentimes for women, can feel very pleasurable. Right, and it's a, it's just kind of a sexy touch, isn't it? I mean, if you're escorting your wife into a theater or something and putting your hand on the small of her back, I mean, that's just very intimate. Uh, uh, you know, most, most men, you know, it's, you know, they would touch you on your shoulders maybe or give you a hug, but only an intimate really touches the small of your back. Mm. 
Do you have some other spots, Lori? Some other <laughs> erogenous zones? <laughs> other hints? Not to uh, put you on the pressure. I'm, I'm also thinking about uh, feet. Feet. Oh, well. so many women talk about they, they love their feet rubbed. It's mm. so relaxing for them. So doing and all sp- the nerve endings there, right? Yeah. I mean, then, um, was it ac- acupressure? Ac- right. Yeah, there's a whole science of medicine that's grown yeah, out of I, that. So. I think there's one spot on the foot that like can bring orgasm. I'm not really sure what that is. We should look that up and figure <laughs> that out Bring in a trained people. professional. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think for men, and, and some of the reading I've done, for men, the soles of a man's feet versus the toes for a woman. So they were mm. saying if you go over to the third toe on a man and you drop down a third of the way – on the sole of his feet and you apply some pressure there that they call that the bubbling spring. And somehow that's supposed to bring um, sexual energy up a man's legs mm-hmm. and into his genitals. And, and for a woman, uh, it's more the toes and, and rolling around or, or pinching the sides of her big toe oftentimes can have a profound effect on, on her as well. You, you can tell me if this is true or not, but um, I hear men talk about that any touch that their wife or their long-term partner gives them you know, like they can be sitting on the couch and she leans over and puts her hand on his knee. Like he feels that is kind of tingly all over, like this electric kind of feeling. Do, do you think that a lot of men re- tell you or do you feel that sometimes this electric touch even even long into the relationship? You know, I'm having flashbacks to earlier conversations about kisses and mm-hmm. this idea of ritual kissing versus pleasure kissing. Mm-hmm. And I think it just depends on the man and the situation. So if we're sitting there as mommy and daddy with the kids on Christmas morning, mm-hmm. that touch may be interpreted for that man as just mm-hmm. nice job, hon. Mm-hmm. We got through Christmas. Great bikes. We got through the holidays again. Yeah, <laughs> you great did bikes. Good. Yeah, you did good. <laughs> we're doing good. Yeah. Everything's fine. And and I think that's very different than maybe having a, a dinner out and mm-hmm. having you your leg touched your partner, by your partner. T- right. Yeah. I, I would say that women tell me that the first touches that a man, you know, the first time he laces his fingers in between yours or the first kiss, the first, you know, just the first briefest of brushes almost, it feels so electric. And they ask me, you know, I don't ever feel that anymore. Does that mean does that mean I'm not attracted to my partner or I don't something has shifted? Like they don't feel that kind of tingly sensation hardly ever on a first touch. Not not that they can't get aroused sexually, that's not what I'm talking about. But I do have men tell me, like, boom, it just electric, you know, any touch. And I was I was just thinking about your foot. Bub- yeah. bubbling spring. I mean, I don't know yeah. if it even takes that for some men. And I think like you're saying, over time, everything does shift. And we've we've talked in earlier episodes about um, how it shifts and changes over time. Um, I'm thinking about the song, A Kiss to Build a Dream On. So there is that electric first kiss. It can be the moment he kissed me, I knew, or the moment mm-hmm. I kissed her, I knew she was the one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think you can ever go back and recreate that kiss. Mm-hmm. As a couple, you can celebrate that kiss and you can talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, as the thing that just knocked you head over heels, um, that doesn't. That's not to say you're not going to have a lifetime of amazing intimate kisses. But I think in our minds, we we we, nos- we build it up. We have mm-hmm. some nostalgia for it, that amazing mm-hmm. first. Kiss. But there's nothing wrong if we don't feel that every time. Right. In you fact, know, the, I don't, I don't think you're supposed to. Yeah, I think. Mm-hmm. And I think as a we couple, look forward to the mountaintops, you know, the peaks yeah. of not not just of orgasm, but of those tingling moments. You know, when we're electric for our spouse or for our partner. Right. And I think just allowing the sex to be whatever it is that night. If it's amazing, it's amazing. If it's just something to lower your anxiety so you can both go to sleep, that's wonderful too. Um, yeah. So you know, my, my tip of the day. Yeah, you've got a tip for your erogenous zones, <laughs> You know, his tip is the most sensitive part. you got to remember that. <laughs> the tip is the tip from Lori yeah. Watson. I think for me, Lori, we have not talked about the most erogenous zone on males or females, completely overlooked. The sexiest spot is your mind. Don't forget that. Yes, absolutely. You're so right. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us today on 4Play Radio Sex Therapy with psychotherapist Tony Del Medico. And sex therapist Lori Watson. We'll see you next time for some more 4Play. Hey, help us stay on top here at 4Play. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much.